And that's something, I think that's something that, that helped me develop very early on is like we had to work with everybody from the highest level to the lowest level and adjusting our skill and our ability so we're, we're able to learn from every person, you know, as opposed to only being able to train with people better than you. Well, well eventually you're going to run out of people better than you because yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. get better. Now you're the best. How do you get better? If you can't learn from the worst, you're going to top out. Yeah, but yeah. if you can learn from everybody, boy, girl, young, old, you have all these people to learn from all the time, no matter where you go. Yeah, but then you, it's like it's like having a computer full of programs, you know, the computer confident that it can do. When you ask it a question, it's, it's got a bank. Yeah. You know, and that confidence alone is, is a, it's great to walk in the room with. You're walking, you're walking karma. Mm -hmm. if, it, if anything, it's, it's, you might not use this whole library of stuff, but if anything, it's real uh, value is it allows you to be calm because you go, I've got an answer to many variables. Yeah. I did a thing with Lucian Carvin called Black Hell. A simple man, mm. but a very, very ingenious psychological preparation where you had to fight four or five guys, all different weights, and they come at, come at you and they do 20 seconds spurts, so they're always fresh. Mm -hmm. And his gym was like a sauna. And at the time that I was fighting, it was Ramadan. So I was nutritionally deficient. Yeah. Again, Ramadan, I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, the gym was literally, you had to put your head out the window to try and, because you felt like you were suffocating. And in a place called the Belmar, you know, in, in, in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And these guys come at you and they give you all different question marks. And you're just trying to, you're just trying to survive. In the end, you're just trying to just get air. You know, you're not doing anything constructive, but at least just, just don't quit. Try and just find something. And I watched the tape back and I was, I was really terrible. But then all of a sudden, bam, you beautiful uppercut would just come. And I'm like, I didn't even think of doing that. Yeah. But the desperation, when it went right down to the well, something, the creativity just went, do this, at least. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't in the bank, I would never, I would never come up with the shape. Mm -hmm. Then you, a couple of days later, you're standing in the room, you turn around and all there is is just one little guy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's even better when you know that your trainer has a method that his trainer don't do. So you, you go and you decide, man, you haven't been through what I've just been through. Mentally, I'm in a different place than you. Yeah. And that alone, to go in the ring with that, can serve so much energy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's two things I learned that was genius, you know, talking about these tiny little adjustments from a boxing trainer called Don Charles, right? It was about the right hand. And I see professional fighters. The right hand is at the back if you're, if you're orthodox. And they throw the right like this. And you can feel in your body, there was a strain. There's a, there's a strain because it's coming all the way from the back and there's a strain. When you feel that electricity, that's where power is now going away. Mm. Because staying in the body. And he said, the freedom. So he said, I don't understand why fighters, when they throw the right, don't just step in with the back foot and take the pressure off the stretch. So then they can carry on through, it, through with the punch. Yeah. So he says, you have to make this sound on the floor. He said, otherwise you haven't thrown the right. Now what happens is, just by stepping in, you haven't slowed this down. But what you've done, you've taken off <coughs> this resistance. Mm. Because this is grooving on the floor at the back. A certain, at this point right here, now it starts to go and pull the punch back. Mm. Now if the person is right at the end of the shot, about 10% of the power's gone because it's been pulled back by your own body. But if I'm here and I step in with it, it's free. Mm -hmm. My body hasn't restricted it at all. Yeah. Then another shot I learned from Tyrone's bomb. The left hook is a great shot for a reason. Because it's free. Mm. In the anatomy, there's no stretch here. Yeah. It's natural, you know, with, with, the, with, with the frame. But the right hook has the same problem as the right. It's coming from behind. Now you have a stretch in this twist. Uh -huh. So as you, as you start to feel the strain, the strain here, the power is going away. If the guys move back a little bit, it's gone completely. Mm. 
So what did Tyrone Spong do? Here, hits the body, steps to the right. Mm. Now, this, just because he steps in here, there's no twisting in the body anymore. The hand is free. So now all of a sudden, my right hook is as nice as my left. Yeah. But if I throw it from here, I need to be standing square and maybe have the guy trapped to have the same power. Right. Yeah, but now I'm in a risk situation, especially in your sport, if the guy leans back in the ropes and just lifts that up, mm-hmm. you have a problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's smart, he just goes to the goes to body and steps, just steps. As the guy's dealing with the issue of being hit to the body, that's the smoke, you know? And then he just sneaks that little, that little, the, mm-hmm. the foot around. All those tiny, tiny little, little adjustments. But you've got to have the psychology to try it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, it's like I'm in the middle of a war and you want me to start fucking around with my foot place and all these other people are trying to take my head off. Yeah. You, 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 the guys that have had the worst beatings in their life are the easier, you know, it's, it's funny, it's like, you know, there's these biblical statements that the meek will inherit the earth. They're usually the people that have taken a lot of shit. So you take a guy in there and you go, you take a kid that's been battered all the time and I'm not advocating this you batter your kids to make them great fighters you know what I mean but you don't have a problem with him saying you know work undertaking punishment check it out it's easy for me why is it easy for you to oh, like I've been through some heavy shit but the thing I'm really know is that I survived it. yeah. it's like I got stabbed multiple times in a street fight once right and then I got my lung, lung pump because one of them got me from behind, right? I put one in my back. And um, when you get your lung punctured, it bleeds and you, you drown inside your body because it the blood fills up inside your body and deflates your lung like this and flattens it. So you can't breathe in or out. And they have to put a pipe through your ribs and drain all your blood out. So the lung can inflate itself again. That's room to inflate itself. And I remember waking up in the hospital and my mother was standing at the end of the bed with my older sister. And my mother went, oh, thank God. Right? And my sister went, thank God. She goes, he's going to be a hundred times worse. Yeah. Because he survived it. He's going to be a hundred times worse. Now he's going to be like, if you stick a knife in me, I'm not going to be as afraid of a person that's never been stabbed before. Yeah. So you, you stab another person that's never been stabbed before, they believe the movies, you know? They're gonna drop dead from this. Yeah, and they go, and they panic and they don't wanna fight. You stab me, I'm gonna keep fighting. That makes me more dangerous. Mm-hmm. The downside of that is it will probably make the person even more scared and make you stab me more. To stop me. <laughs> <laughs> but my yeah. example is, is that once you, once you come out the other end and you survive stuff, there's a bonus with that. Yeah. It means, you know, possibilities, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you look at people like Tyrone Spong, who never used to be a big giant guy like what he is now, he used to be lighter than me. Yeah. And who was brought up in the gymnasium by a trainer that invented a thing called Black Hell, where all the fighters get their shit kicked out of them and they get off the floor. Yeah. So the more you put, you know, this trial by your big, it's a fine art, you know, because you can break somebody. Yeah. Also, they're psychologically not set up for that. So yeah. the trainer has to really know the people that he's testing it. Yeah. Testing it with, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's like they say you can't, uh, you can't be courageous until you've done the thing you're afraid of. You don't get courage before you do it. Because prior to that, it's just ignorance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're just, if you're doing something and being brave, it's because you're cra- either crazy or you just, you don't know, and you know, but you're not really brave until you've done it, gone through it, and then do we'll do it again, because right. you know you know what can happen. It's like a fight, your first fight, you don't know. Like I've seen it on TV, but you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to get your nose broken or blow out your knee or, or to get knocked out. Once you've had that happen and you still go back, that's courage, because you know now you know you've been through it and you still do it anyway. That's the only way to get brave. Yeah. You have to do the thing you're afraid of. Overcome it, do it again. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. By this particular pattern that you that, that, that you put yourself through, like the fighting, do you still think you're constructing 
who you are. Because like I said, when we were discussing your last fight, you, mm -hmm. you, you, there was a look of disappointment, even though you won. Yeah. So that tells you that you have, that, that says that anybody that has any sense of you, you've got an ulterior motive for being in fights. Yeah. And it was like, here was another opportunity that you were taking, this is my take on it, that there's another opportunity that you were taking to find out something more about yourself and you were put in a situation where you, you didn't get that facility. Yeah. You found out your technique works. <laughs> but you, I don't think you found out very much about your resilience. Hmm.